Hello everyone, it's Tuesday, January 1st, 2013, and in this video I'll be demonstrating an application called Capacitive Buttons Brightness version 1.0.8. This application allows you to control the brightness of the three capacitive buttons on the bottom of the device, the back key, the home key, and the recent tasks key. I found these three buttons a little bit too bright for my liking, so I wrote an application that made it possible to control them. So let's launch the application. As you can see on the main interface is very straightforward and there are three brightness options for you to choose from. Off, Dim, and Bright. So let's go ahead and start with Off. There's a bit of a delay here while the application is requesting root access to the device. In order for this application to work, your device does need to be rooted and you have to grant root access to the application. If you watch, the brightness of the capacitive buttons at the bottom has just turned off. So they're barely even visible in the video. We can also set it to dim and to bright. There is a subtle difference between dim and bright but it becomes more pronounced when you're in a dark room. I find dim to be much more pleasing to the eye than bright. You can also press the default button to go back to your ROM's default brightness setting for the capacitive buttons. I typically use dim um, on a day-to-day -day basis. I find that it's a good balance between brightness and not screaming in your face in a dark room, but the offsetting I find useful Specifically when I'm watching a YouTube video in a dark room, it find that the buttons scream at you if they're turned on, so I like to turn them off. But let's set it back to dim for now. The application has a menu with two options in it, settings and about. So let's take a look at the settings menu. There's only really one setting, which is set on boot, which typically you should leave checkmarked. The only reason that you would want to uncheck mark it is if you're trying to debug an issue that has to do with this application and setting the capacitive button's brightness on reboot. Otherwise, you can just leave it checkmarked. The debug information is a screen that you would go to if you want to report a bug or an issue with the application. This screen provides a bunch of information about the application and about your device, which is very useful to the development the development team when trying to debug issues that you're reporting. So if you do find yourself reporting an issue on the Google code page or the xtdevelopers.com forums, please either attach a screenshot of this screen or the contents. You can take a screenshot on the HTC One X by holding the power key and pressing the home key. Whoops. You can also use the copy button at the top of the screen, which will copy the contents of the screen to the clipboard, which can then be pasted in an email or the xdadevelopers.com forum post. The About screen lists just some gen general information about the application, including the name of the app, the version, a little bit of preamble about the GNU public license, uh, the URL of the Google code page where the source code for this application is hosted, a quick note of which device the application has detected that you're running on, and a button to bring up the credits for the application. This screen lists all the people that have contributed code or visual resources to the application, and by clicking on a user, it will launch their web page for you to take a look at their other projects and their work. So this application is a free download from the Google Play Store, and so it's easy to install and keep up to date just by installing it from there. I'm just going to take a quick look at the Google code page for this application. This is where all the development occurs. And it also lists the supported devices, which at the moment are the HTC One X, both the North American and the international variant, the dual core and the quad core as well as the HTC One X Plus. There have also been reports of this application working successfully on the HTC One S, HTC One V, and the Evo 3G. 
So if you have any of those devices, or even an, another device, you can try installing this application and see if it works. If it doesn't work, it won't cause any harm to your device. If you're interested in tracking the progress of the development of this application, you can check out the threads for your device on the xdadevelopers.com forums, where new features are requested and bugs are reported. So I hope you find this application useful, and so go ahead and give it a try.